<laughs> it's fine, it's fine book. book. I'm telling you. Hard not, hard not preach. Hard not hard preaching. Preach. We got people, got people preaching. here preaching. Well, well maybe, 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 maybe they don't hear, hear tonight. tonight. Hey, but, hey, uh, but uh, I'm excited, I'm excited about, about what God's, God's doing. doing. I'm already hearing, I'm already some, hearing testimonies some testimonies coming about, coming about uh, during this uh, during time, time of prayer and fasting. And, fasting. and, and, I, hope and, and I hope that you're having an encounter with God. I hope you're just, hope not, you're in just not in the middle of it. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing just happening. Just keep on. Just keep on. Just keep on. Be like that, be little, like that train. little train. Just keep on. Just keep right. on. Right. Be a little, be a little train. Just train. Just keep on tugging, along. tugging along. But tonight, but tonight, I want to talk about, about unity, unity. Uh, in prayer uh, and fasting. We're going to be an act tonight. tonight. Uh, uh, we're just, we're just one, one brief scripture there. Acts chapter 2. I didn't give you anything to tap on. I'm sorry. I really wasn't even thinking at the moment. When you get when there, you get to, there Acts to Acts chapter 2, two go ahead and go stand, ahead and stand one, one, second. one more second. I'm just going to read one, one, verse. one verse, and then we'll, and then pray, we'll pray and, and dive, into, dive this into this thing. Acts chapter 2, two verse 1 says, one says, when the day of Pentecost, Pentecost fully, come, fully come, they were all, they were all somebody, somebody say all, say all with, one accord, with one accord, somebody say somebody one, accord, one accord, in one place. In one place. Father, we Father, thank you tonight, for tonight we are we are one place. And we are, and we are in one accord. We are in one we mind, are in one mind, body, and one body, 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 Father. And we're believing, and, we're believing and, trusting and trusting you for great, for great things. things. Now, Spirit, now, Spirit of, God, of God, I ask you tonight, you tonight to show, to up, show in up in this place. Father, give Father, us give understanding, understanding where understanding is needed. Is needed. Wisdom, where wisdom, where wisdom is needed. Strength, 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 strength is needed. Master, I pray tonight that you would get all the glory and all the honor. Now, Father, tonight I need you. Anoint me, anoint Father, me, Father, preach and preach your word, word. anoint the ears and the hearts, hearts to receive it. To receive it. And Master, I, I thank you that you're allowing, you're allowing me to be used, to be used by, you. by you. I give you praise, praise, praise for it. In Jesus' name, Jesus name that, I that I ask this. Amen. 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 One more Amen. hand clap for the Lord before you're seated. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor, thank you, Pastor Jennifer. Jennifer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, well. How many of How you many are, of you are, are hanging, are in, hanging there? in there? <laughs> I, I started, I started to, use to use an acronym, an acronym but, I but I better not use it. Anyway, so anyway. But, uh, but, uh, but it's tough but it's sometimes, tough sometimes ain't, it? ain't it? It's tough. But I think but sometimes, I think sometimes you, know, you know, I preached I about it. About it. Uh, uh, I don't even know when I, I preached about it now. But I talked about us all doing it at the same time. We do it together. We do it together. It becomes it somewhere, becomes your, somewhere responsibility your responsibility for other people. For other people. And when you know, and other, when you know people other people are relying, relying on you to pray and pray and fast for them, and they're and praying and fasting fast for you, it makes it, it makes a little bit easier, easier in, in, in my opinion, it does anyway. Does anyway. I, know I'm I know I'm obligated to, uh, to, to, pray, to pray and fast and seek the face of the Father for everybody in this room. And I'm still praying and believing for everything that's down and down. I'm praying and believing with it. Amen. 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 I believe it's going to happen. Gonna happen. Because, why? Because, because why? Because I feel like, I feel God, like God, is really, God is really, I know I, I know say, I it, say but it, but I really feel I really like feel we're on the edge of something here. I, I feel like we're on the edge of, of something big that's going to happen right here in Forsyth, right here in this church. Not this in the, in the other churches. I hope that happens there too. But I believe it's going to happen right here. I believe that revival is going to is going to come to this area. I believe there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit like we've never seen before. I believe that it's coming to this house. I believe that. I'm telling you, I believe it like I ain't never believed anything. I believe it. <laughs> that threw everybody off in it. Throw me off a little bit too. <laughs> But I feel that there's something uh, uh, somewhat stirring or shifting in our atmosphere. And we speak these things. And, you know, I tell you all the time, you can change your atmosphere by your words by speaking these things. And so sometimes when we speak those things, we think we should see the atmosphere shift right there. But it don't always shift at that moment because there's seasons that God needs things to take place. 
So we've been talking about shifting and we've been talking about the change in the atmosphere, but the season hasn't been right. But I think the season is getting right now. I think the fruit on the tree is ready to be pulled off. Ah, uh, I'll see before it was just seedlings and saplings coming up out the ground, but the trees have sprouted up. And as they have sprouted up, the fruit is ready to be picked. I believe the harvest is ready in this town. I believe it's ready. I believe God's really getting ready, getting you ready for what's fixing to happen. But I also understand that God's plan for a person or a group of people doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen. Uh, we have to prepare ourselves to receive what God wants to give us before it can ever take place. We have to be prepared. God's just not going to send something we're not prepared for because if he did, it would never work. I want to talk to you tonight about preparing yourself uh, to receive what God has in store for you. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible uh, records a miraculous outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And as we read, they were all in one accord. They was all in one place. The day of Pentecost was the day that the Holy Ghost rained down from heaven. Uh, it came down like uh, cloven tongues of fire on people and, uh, and uh, it changed the hearts of the men that were in that upper room that day. Uh, there was something big that took place on that day. It was the day that heaven came down and encountered them in that room. Yet the day of Pentecost didn't just happen by accident. It didn't just happen because 120 men run up in that room. Uh, Tab, you want to turn that air down? If you turn the air on, I mean, they, I see people's hands. But it didn't just happen because 120 guys said, let's just go sit up in a room for a little bit. It didn't just fall in their laps, so to speak. It didn't just happen at the spur of the moment. It didn't just happen because people casually got together and prayed. And it didn't even happen because God desired it for it to happen. Listen to me for a minute, man. See, how many know that God planned that Pentecost? He planned it to happen. Uh, he knew it was going to come. It had been prophesied uh, 400 years before uh, by the prophet Joel. It had been planned out in the man, uh, mind of God since the beginning of time. He knew that it was going to happen. It was his plan. It was his will. The reason God chose to fill 120 believers with the Holy Ghost and give salvation to 3,000 more on the same day was because the group of people who had prepared themselves for that day. See, we are preparing ourselves right now through prayer and fasting for what God's fixing to do. We are preparing ourselves to say, Father, we are ready to receive whatever you want to send our way. We have to prepare ourselves to do it. We don't just come in and throw food down on the table. We prepare the table for the food that's about to be given. We have to prepare some things. See, it's still the plan of God, though, to what? Save souls today. It's still in his plan today to give the Holy Spirit to those that would have it. It's his plan, and it has not changed. He still plans on saving people. He still plans on uh, baptizing people in water, baptizing them with the Holy Ghost. He still plans on people to be healed and set free from the bondages and addictions and the strongholds that this world has on it. It's still in his plan. Bible says in 2 Peter 3 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but his long suffering uh, to us were not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. He wants everybody. Now, this revival we'll be doing next week is a revival for that church down there, for that area. But revival is for seeing souls coming to the kingdom. Revival is what draws the loss. And, and see, it don't just happen. Uh, the Bible says that only have, uh, salvation comes through the drawing of the Spirit. So when we pray and fast, we are setting the atmosphere for God to draw the lost into this house. So we're doing it down there, revival down there to revive that church. But right here, we're preparing for the lost souls to come in. Those that are lost and undone, we're preparing an atmosphere for them to come in. I want you to know tonight that it's God's will for every person. Now, you may got somebody you, you really don't like. I'm not going to use the word hate, but you might have somebody you really don't like. But did you know it's still God's plan for that person to be saved? I don't care. You say, Pastor, you don't know what they've done to me. It don't matter what they've done. 
It don't matter what they've done to you. They, God's plan is still for them to receive the same gift that you receive, and that's the gift of salvation. That's still his plan for every person in this house tonight. It's a plan for every person in this city tonight, in this state, in this nation, in this world, for every person in your family. Oh, yeah, it's God's plan. Somebody say it's his plan. It's his plan to pour out his spirit on the same people. Uh, the Bible says in Acts 2.39, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Let me tell you something. How many has been called tonight? If you've been called by the Lord, then he still wants to pour out his spirit in your life. You say, well, Pastor, I've been seeking. Well, now's the time to seek even harder because I'm telling you, when you are preparing your temple of the Holy Ghost to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, to receive the second blessing. You're preparing yourself. So right now, I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there. If you say, I have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, during these next 14 days, you need to be praying for it. Amen. And I'm not saying, God, at the end of 14 days, give me the Holy Ghost. God, give it to me tonight. God, give it to me tomorrow in the shower. Give it to me when I'm riding down the road. God, give it to me. I desire it. Look, when you start desiring the things of the Father, He's going to give it to you. He's going to give it to you. He said he'll give us our heart's desire as long as it lines up with his. The promise was for everybody then and it's for everybody now. God is ready and waiting to pour out his spirit on Abundant Life Church for sight. And I believe it tonight that it's not only for church people, but it's the people that haven't walked in yet. But I believe there's going to be a time, and I believe it's coming soon, that we're going to see an influxuation of people. I believe it. I believe it. See, I don't want to be negative, but God sometimes waits to pour his spirit out. As I said, he has to prepare us. Uh, I don't want it to sound like we have to work to receive salvation. Now, understand me. And we don't have to work to receive the Holy Ghost. That's what he wants to do. And that's not what I'm trying to say. There is nothing that we can do that will make us ever worthy of receiving his spirit. There's nothing we can do. So don't try to work yourself into it. Don't try to negotiate with them. You ain't worthy anyway. That's why it's a gift. Titus 3, 5 says that not by works of righteousness we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. It is only by his mercy and his grace that we are saved today. There's no other reason. It's by his mercy and his grace. It's not difficult for God to save someone. It's not difficult for God to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. He can do it right now. Even while I'm preaching, he can slay you in the spirit. God can fill every person who needs the Holy Ghost today. All 120 that were in that upper room received the Holy Ghost. All 3,000, the Bible says, gave their life to the Lord. They received salvation. They were saved and filled because of God's mercy and grace. And we can't do anything to purchase our salvation. It is a gift. It's a free gift. Having said that, God doesn't just stand on the street corner, though, and just give it out to everybody. Understand what I'm saying here. He don't just give it by to the passerby. They gotta, they gotta, they gotta want something. There has to be a desire. There, there has to be a change that they're desiring. He did. His people don't walk down the street and God says, "You're saved. You're saved. You're saved." Now, if somebody's standing on the street corner preaching salvation and they come by, then God can save them and draw them, and we know that. But what I'm trying to say is, there's a preparation that takes place. He says that the men have to be drawn by the Spirit of God. When they're drawn by the Spirit of God, He's preparing them to receive. Receive salvation. Understand. Every time we see a, a, a move of the Holy Spirit, an outpouring of His Spirit in the Bible, there were always a group of believers who had submitted their will, submitted their will to God's will. The 120 had submitted their plans to God's plans. They laid aside everything that was on their agenda for however how many days that they thought it was going to take. We know that about 300 more left before it happened. They weren't willing to submit to God's plan. They wanted to stay on their time frame and their plan. And as soon as they received the Holy Ghost, they began to share what they had received. That's why they went out into the streets. That's why 3,000 got saved on that day. There was a preparation that had already took place. See, somebody needs to be ready to share what you have. The problem is we become selfish. 
we become Christians and we become selfish for what God's given us. Ah, you know, we read in Acts where they, they took everything and they, they shared it amongst everybody. Uh, we get a little bit of money in our pocket and one of our brothers needs something and we won't even share it with him. But we even forget that the last month we didn't have no money in our pocket and somebody shared with us. We've got to be a, a sharing group of people. Let me tell you what it does. When we bring, uh, when we start sharing, uh, it brings a sense of unity. It brings a sense of family because who's the number one? Well, it may not be the number one person you share with most of the time is family. It might be the worst per people to share with. Now that I think about it, amen. But there's a sense of unity there when we start trusting in one another. We start believing uh, in one another. And I believe that God has prepared us. I just think he's waiting for some people around here to say, you know what, Father, it ain't my will anymore that's to be done. And in this time of prayer and fasting, I pray that you would change my heart and my will will become your will because your word says that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means I've got to remove myself completely out of the picture and I've got to let God's will come right in the middle of it. So the question tonight is, is do your plans light up with God's plans? Mm. Do your plans line up with God's plans? Are we ready to receive what God has planned for us in Forsyth, Georgia? Are we ready for what God has a plan for us in this house right now? Are we ready for it, beloved? We always say we're ready and we want it, but are we really ready? Are we really ready? Are we really ready for the... For the person that may come off the street that smells like the street. Oh, we changed the seat we've been sitting in for six months because they done sat down beside us. Oh, we're really ready for what God's going to send in because let me tell you something. He may not just send in the nicest people. All right. He may not send in the ones that smell like Ralph Lauren. All right. He may send in the ones that, say, that smell like the Taco Bell dumpster out back. Let me tell you something. You've got to be ready for what God's going to do. He's going to be sending in the broken. He's going to be sending in the addicted. He's going to be sending in the drug addict. He's going to be sending in the alcoholic. He's going to be sending in the thief. But let me tell you something, brother. We've got to receive him with open arms. He knew Judas was a thief, but he still received him and put him over the treasury. Somebody's got to get ready to give what God's already given you. He give you a gift, and it's time for you to pass that gift on. Mm-mm-mm. Let me tell you something. When you came to God, he didn't abandon you, did he? Uh, what's the Bible say about abandonment? It says he'll never leave you or he'll never forsake you. He's not going to leave you as an orphan out there left in, the, in, in, in some place to dry up and die. God is not going to, to birth a new Christian into our church if we can't care for that Christian. If we can't raise the new babes up in Christ, up in God's word, then guess what he's going to do? He's going to send them down the road. God is not going to give us a revival that we're not prepared for. See, sometimes we just say we're ready for something. I'm not saying anybody in here is doing this. Understand. But sometimes, let me just say the church is a general. Sometimes the church says we're ready, we're ready, we're ready. But then it happens and we go, well, I really wasn't ready. So we can say things with our head a lot of times and that's why things haven't happened. Because God says you really wasn't ready. So God, just like he had planned the outpouring of his spirit 400 years before it happened, he's already planned what's going to happen here. He's just waiting for us to get ready to receive it. He's waiting for us to get ready. The Bible says that when the 120 went in the upper room, they were all in one accord in one place. They all had the mind of Christ. They were all on the same page. They were all in agreement. They were prepared for what God was about to do. When we go into a time of prayer and fasting, when we go into that time, our mind comes together. Our spirits come linked up in the spirit realm. We're all praying. That's why I had you fill out them cards, and I hope you're praying over everyone because what it, it linked us up in the spirit realm. It linked us up. See, I'm not just praying for my, my need, and you're not just over here praying for your need. Because, see, when you're over here praying for yours and I'm over here praying for mine, there's a void in between us. But when I'm sitting here and I'm calling down heaven over Ray's shoulder for it to be healed in the name of Jesus, and Ray's over here calling down healing on his shoulder, we linked up arm and arm. We're fighting the demons of hell, and we're saying we'll no longer give way to you, but we're going to stand in agreement and take authority that God has given us. 
It's when we're doing these things in agreement. So we started uh, this fast on uh, last Thursday the 2nd, Daniel's fast. And some of you may not have known we was doing it. Some of you may have said, I ain't going to do it. And that's fine too. You can be rebellious how you want to. But I'm telling you right now, if you want to see God move in your life, you need to jump on it. You need to jump on it. Now you ain't got but 14 days left. Now don't sit there and say, well, if he preaches this next Wednesday, I ain't got but seven days. No, it ain't working like that. <laughs> Now look, I, in all seriousness, you want to see God bless you and move in some areas, you need to do this fast. You need to jump on board with us. This is a call to go deeper with God. It's a call to go deeper in our devotion time, in our prayer time, and in our relationship with the Father. Look, I don't want to, I don't want to know God for 50 years of my life, but never know God. Do you understand what I'm saying? The devil knows him, but he don't have a relationship with him. And he's known him for a lot of years, but he still don't have a relationship with him. This is an opportunity for us to grow closer. We're not doing this to prepare God. We are doing this to prepare ourselves. We're not doing this to change God's plans. We're doing this to change our own plans. We're not doing this to ask God to shower our church with a Holy Ghost outpour. We're doing this to show God that we're ready for a Holy Ghost outpour. And just like Sunday and second service, it ain't planned to go that way. But when a group of people get in one mind and in one accord and they say, Father, whatever you want to do, we want to see it happen. Then he says, now. I can do something in that place because it's not their will they won't do but it's my will that they won't do and when his will starts to happen the spirit of God is poured out in such a way oh I'm telling you God's got bigger things in store for us than just so happened Sunday morning. God has already promised to pour out his spirit and he's doing it. He's given us a glimpse of it. It's in his will. Are we doing this to conform our minds and our bodies to God's will? When we fast, that's exactly what we're doing. We're conforming our mind, body, our spirit to say, Father, no longer me. But I want to do what you want me to do. I want to hear from heaven. I can't even tell you how many people uh, wrote on that list, and you got the list, so you'll know. But they, they say, I want to know what God's will is for me. I need a closer relationship with Jesus. I need to walk deeper with him. I need to know what my calling is. Let me tell you something. If you're one of those people sitting in here and you're not on this fast, that's why you need to jump on. If you want to hear God's voice, this is the perfect opportunity to hear his voice because you start submitting to him. Jesus instructed us to pray for his will in Matthew 6, 9 and 10. It said, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father with art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we pray for the will of God to be done in the earth, we are submitting our priorities to God's priorities. It's no longer about us. It's no longer about us. Often we pray and we ask God to answer our needs and our desires. We pray according to our will. When all you can do is pray and say, God, I need this, and I need this, and I need this, and I need this, then you are praying your will and not God's will. So in other words, when you pray, I'm not saying that I'm some kind of, I got it all down because I don't. But I make sure that when I pray over that list, I pray for everybody and everything. The last person I pray for is myself. He already knows my needs anyway. He already knows what I need. I'm not lacking in anything. God's blessed me. I'm not lacking in anything. He already knows my desires. I'm just trying to make my make sure my desires lined up with his desire because I know when it happens, there's going to be big things that come out of it. That is not how Jesus instructed us to pay, uh, pray according to our, but he instructed us to pray for God's will to be done. Look at 1 John 5, 14 and 15. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. Listen to this right here now. That if we ask anything according to his will. Now did you hear that right there? If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Man. And this is a confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've desired of him. 
this scripture gives us two important things about prayer. Number one, God only hears those prayers that are according to his will. <laughs> oh, that's what the scripture says, beloved. So what am I saying there? You're saying that, Pastor, he don't hear me when I pray uh, 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 for my uh, house note to get paid. No, he hears you because it's in his will for you not to be cast on the street. Do you see? You understand what I'm saying? He hears our prayers because they're lining up with him. You're saying, Pastor, well, he don't hear when I pray for a lost loved one. Why? Because it's in his desire for that lost loved one to come to him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, when I pray, God, I need a million dollars, he may not be hearing that prayer. You understand? All right. I, I, I thought I lost half of you there. Number two, when we ask according to his will, God will answer. When we ask according to his will, he will answer. That's the faith. When we understand these two things about prayer, our faith becomes strengthened. A moment, uh, a few moments ago, uh, 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 let me think how to say this. Uh, A few moments ago, I was in my office and I was praying, and, and I know my voice is still scratchy, understand me, but I had pain in my voice, and I've been drinking that drink, but I said, God, you know, I'm not submitting to the drink. You know what I need to do right now, and I need you to strengthen my voice where it doesn't hurt, because I'm ignorant and hard-headed, and I can't be quiet and not do it when I get up here. I just have to do it. But just like when Mark talked about uh, the disciples couldn't cast out a demon, out of the boy. The disciples came and they asked and said, why did they fail? What did he say to them? Does anybody know exactly what he says? By prayer and fasting. All right, now look at this right here. Matthew 17, 20, 21 says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it? Another word there would be however. This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. At first glance, we would think that the demon was a, somewhat of a, a more powerful demon. He was especially difficult to handle. It seems as though he might require extra attention, uh, a little bit more prayer uh, uh, than what everybody had. But the real reason they could not cast the demon out was because of their unbelief. Their faith was weak. Listen to me. Unbelief was the reason, but prayer and fasting was the remedy. See, sometimes when we get in our prayer time, in our prayer closet, God is building up our faith. That's why he said, build yourself up on your most holy faith. Always praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude, chapter, uh, Jude 20, I believe, is that what that is? But what I'm telling you, beloved, is when you get in your prayer closet, you hit your knees and you cry out to the Father, I'm telling you, your faith starts to arise. Your faith starts to arise. Prayer and fasting uh, strengthens our faith and it strengthens our relationship with God. The strength of our faith depends upon the strength of our relationship. If we don't have a, uh, a deep relationship with the Father, we probably don't have a lot of faith. The man said, and if I remember right, he said, Help, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. How many times have you said, Lord, help me with this right here? I'm struggling with it. And if you could probably go back to that moment and think about it for just a minute, it was probably a time when you wasn't seeking God like you may have normally had. So what am I saying there? I'm saying that in that time that you wasn't having that deep relationship with him, your faith wasn't where it needed to be. In the story, the disciples had not been practicing a consistent life of prayer and fasting. Therefore, the relationship with God was weak. They followed Jesus. They saw what Jesus did. But they didn't do everything Jesus did. In the moment when they needed to draw great faith with their relationship or from the relationship with God, they could only draw little faith. The reason... The reason that we go into an extended time of prayer and fasting is so that we can strengthen our relationship with God and thereby grow our faith at the same time. See, prayer and fasting changes you. That's why some people don't participate in it. It reveals things about you. It starts showing you things that you need to get rid of. 
It starts showing you things that you can't watch anymore. It starts showing you things you can't listen to anymore. It starts showing you people you can't hang out with anymore. It starts showing you places you can't go anymore. It starts showing you things you can't say anymore. People say, I don't want to be a part of any of that. The change does not happen overnight, but change will come through a consistent prayer and fasting. Over 21 days, we can establish more uh, consistency in our personal devotion time to God if you'll just make time for it to happen. I'm telling you, I, I'm, I, you can ask my wife, one of my things on my list is, Lord, help me in my prayer time with you because I always seem to be busy, 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 busy. I go to pray and somebody calls, something happens, phone goes off, you want to look at your phone. Now I just have to take the phone, put it in another room, put it on silent, whatever, where I don't even have to worry about it. Because if it goes off, what you going to do? You're going to look at it. So you're going to get that devil out of the room. Amen. Go on, turn the one-eyed monster off in the other room so you ain't, you ain't hearing Judge Judy on there laughing about what she's telling some knucklehead to be quiet over there. Because there's all kind of distractions that take place. And so I said, Lord, whatever I can do this time in this prayer and fasting, help me to have a deeper prayer life with you. I want us all to remember two words that we go that, that uh, we need to go through or that we're going to go through during this process. Number one word is momentum. And the second word is balance. Momentum comes from the word moment. So during this time uh, of three weeks or now two weeks, we're going to be building spiritual momentum. You understand? Uh, well, I'm not going. To, we're not going to stay in the same place we've been. We're being, we're building momentum. We're like that roller coaster ride. Uh huh. You know the one where it goes click, 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 and you hold on because you're like, oh Lord Jesus. You start praying in, don't you? Oh Lord Jesus, don't let this be the time this thing malfunctions. If it starts going backwards, I don't know what I'm going to do. But it's click, click, click. And then all at once, when it goes over the top, you start feeling that force. It's building momentum to take you somewhere. And that's what we're doing. We're building spiritual momentum. We're building uh, momentum towards a moment in time, a moment in God's time that he's already established for this time. We're building the momentum to get there for what he wants to do in Monroe County. Most people live for the big moments in their life. Ah, uh, the women live for their big wedding or you live for a big promotion at work or you live for the, the big vacation. In the church, uh, the big moment is the record attendance. And all these things are good and all these things should be celebrated. But when we get so focused on the moment, sometimes the before and after don't go so well. See, during a, a wedding just a few months before, what's happening there is a lot of planning going on, isn't there? Uh, mama and daughters are fussing and fighting. Oh, yeah, her, uh, fiancés and, and fiancés or whatever it's called, they fussing and fighting. All this is happening. There's a lot of work that gets done. Couples get stressed out during this time, so stressed out. They don't even want to get married when it comes that day, do they? It comes down to get married, and they look at each other like, Dang, I don't want to marry this joker now. But the moment comes, the 15 minutes of fame happens for four months of planning. The wedding's over. Everything was great. All these good things happen. But for most couples, the one big moment is all they have. After the big moment, it almost becomes a, a letdown. See, when they get home, life starts. Work happens. Bills start coming. Stress starts happening. And they never enjoy the moment after the moment. Listen to me, beloved. Let's make our big moment as great as we possibly can, but let's enjoy the process of getting there. So don't be so negative during the fasting and the pray. Oh, I got to eat another stinking tangerine. No, rejoice that you got a tangerine to eat. Amen. Rejoice that you got a handful of almonds. Amen. I'm telling you right now. Rejoice in these things if you enjoy it. I believe, I honestly believe it's just like the Bible says that he loves a cheerful giver. If you're doing this fast and all you've done is complain the whole seven days that we've been on it or however long we've been on that, then guess what you might just need to go and get out of it. Because you probably your past seven days ain't been to a hill of beans in China anyway. 
So enjoy these 21 days of, of uh, getting close to God, drawing closer to Him. And look forward to the days ahead that's about to happen. Let's look, look forward to the victories that are going to come. Let's look forward to the testimonies that are going to come out of this. Let's look forward to the new friendships that are going to be made when people start walking in these doors. Oh, when we have fellowship dinner with new converts and we're able to hear the testimony and how God delivered them. And they say, yeah, I don't know what it was, but it was in January of 2020 when I felt the Lord calling me and we can sit there and say it was because we was praying and fasting God heard everything that I said mm. it isn't just about one big weekend but it's about an eternity with the Father so let's keep the momentum going what happens is just like that roller coaster it gets all that speed when it comes down but most roller coasters hit another hill, don't they? And they lose the momentum that they had. They slow back down. Beloved, we got to be able to keep running. Just as fast as we got the momentum going, we got to keep on running. We can't let these things happen. But that's where the second word comes in about balance. Somebody say balance. What good does it do if you finally get that promotion you've been wanting? If you had to sacrifice your marriage to get it. What good does it do it as a church if we win a hundred souls to the Lord, but we lose our own family in the process? We got to stay balanced with that. The Bible tells us how to be balanced. Matthew 6, 33, I already said earlier tonight. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Notice he said, seek ye. That means you seek God first before anything else. This is how the balance structure works. This is the way your priorities ought to be when it comes to your walk with God. It should always be God first. Your personal relationship with God must come first. You cannot be an example to your family if you don't put God first. Your immediate family, your spouse, your children. After your relationship with God, then your relationship with your family is second. Listen to me. Spend time with your family both in and out of church. Try your best to get a job that allows you to come to church. God will help you do it. This also means, though, that you must lead your family to Christ. Don't schedule family nights on church night. God's only asking for one night of church and one Sunday. Try your best to schedule things around God's kingdom. Your church is the third most important thing in your life. Mm. I have seen and heard too many people in ministry and too many people that run for the, uh, run for the Lord and they lose their children in the middle of it because they didn't put their family before the church. They put God, the church, and their family. And beloved, you got to make sure you keep that thing in order. God, family, church. So during this time of prayer and fasting, make sure you spend time with your family. Don't put them to the side. Oh, I got to get in here and pray for six hours. No. Spend time with your family. Encourage your family to be a part of it with you. Take time to do devotions together. That's why we do the devotions on, on uh, that Pastor Jeremiah and them give the book out here. Talking about the 21 days of double, a prayer guide, and proclamations. It's the, so we all be together as a family. We are a church family. Amen. Momentum and balance. Remember those two words. Because this is how we're going to do this thing. We're going to get the momentum. We're going to make sure we got everything balanced out. And then we're going to watch God's hand move in such a powerful way. Amen. I know everybody can't pray all day long. So just pray when you got a free moment. If you may have to get up 30 minutes earlier to hit the prayer before you got to go out, get up 30 minutes early. All you got to do is go to bed 30 minutes early. Amen. Be like my daddy and go to bed at 8.15. <laughs> don't let the enemy, don't let a believer, don't let a brother or sister condemn you in any way during this fast. 
Whatever time you can set aside will be the time that you set aside. Just make sure when you set it aside, you use it for what you use it for. So fasting, we will be doing the Daniel's fast as you know. But I want to encourage you that after this fast, you take this and incorporate it in your life, your personal life. Look, when you need something from the Lord, you need him to answer to me. I'm not talking about like I ain't talking about the million dollars. When you need God's hand to move, fast for it. Fast for it. Try to do a, a day fast. Try to do a six to six fast. Then kind of work your way up to a to maybe a 24 hour fast. And then maybe you do a day and a half fast. And eventually try to do a three day fast. And you want to see God's hand move. I'm telling you, as sure as I can tell you right now. I know that my growth in my life and my walk with the Lord was in a time that we was at a church and our pastor taught us about prayer and fasting. And we fasted. What did we fast, Mr. Word? We fast every, uh, once a month, we fasted, what was it, Monday through Tuesday? Is that what we fasted for prayer meeting? Wasn't it? Didn't we go from Monday night at 6 to all the way to Tuesday or something like that? Isn't that what we did, sir? Tuesday. No, I think we did Monday. It was Monday and Tuesday, wasn't it? We did it once a month, and then we would end it at prayer meeting. Now, they had prayer meeting every week, but they incorporated it. And so what I started doing, I saw God's hand moving that. Next thing I did, I said, you know what? I'm going to try to do a three-day fast. I'm already doing a little over a day, so I'm going to try to do a three-day fast. And I just progressed from that. And every time God, it was almost like he was taking and, and elevating or taking and putting something else inside of me. I don't know how to describe it, beloved, but I'm telling you, I was starting to obtain things from God that, in His Word that, that I didn't even know I had read. And so I'm just telling you that there's something that moves God's hand when He sees that sacrifice. Why? Because everywhere we look today, it's about food. Amen. Everywhere you look, it's about food. There's a food place on every corner just about or a billboard sign with food, and, and it's almost become a luxury and a pleasure. So I want you to understand that tonight. I'm praying for you. I'm believing with you, and I'm telling you right now, God's going to do something. And we're going to have a testimony night coming out of this thing. Probably tonight we have the uh, the fellowship dinner. We might get a few testimonies in to set that thing up. But I want you to look. Even the little thing, write it down. Even the little thing. If you can't give God glory in the little thing, why do you think he's going to do something big for you? Because he ain't going to do nothing that he ain't going to get the glory out of. He ain't going to let you get it out of nothing. So you need to make sure even the little things that you ain't even think I thought about that maybe have already happened, you need to say, you know what? I need to write that down. And I want to hear about it. Amen? Amen. Let me pray. Uh, it's 815. You all ready to go? Ain't nobody going to say nothing to me. Somebody's like, this is a trick question. No, I don't have it. was one. Let me pray right quick. Just you stay seated. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for your word. Lord, thank you for your people. And I ask you tonight, Lord, that everything that I've spoken, I pray was from the Holy Spirit. And Lord God, I pray that my words that have come from the Spirit of God have strengthened your people. They have encouraged your people. And Lord, I have edified them. Now, Master, I know you have big things in store for everyone in this room. So, Lord, I'm asking you tonight. Show us these things. Reveal these things to us, Lord. God, help us to be better disciples of Christ. Father, we do everything we do to bring you glory and honor in this house. Lord, we can't wait to see what you're about to do. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God one hand clap of praise. I got my questions tonight because I thought y'all was going to get out of here without having to answer any questions. But I saw Brother Gene back there, and he is ready.